Hey, hey, what's going on, you tubulous? EXO coming at you here. You're probably wondering, where are all the build videos you're right in the middle of building this truck? Why are you taking so long? Well, I had a couple things I needed to take care of, including a brand new computer build. Now, if you were following the channel, we were gonna buy a brand new truck and do a build in that, but I figured I'd save the money and buy a brand new computer for 2018. Now in this video, we're gonna be building the entire thing, installing Windows, and seeing if everything works. So sit back, relax, and let's enjoy a good old computer build. Well, here we are, and as you can see, we have quite the smorgasbord of computer parts laid out, just waiting to be built. I can't wait. This is definitely gonna be the biggest and fastest build I have ever done. So let's go ahead and do a nice slow going introduction here and just explain the parts, why I bought them, and just, you know, each and every single component. Uh, we'll start out with the CPU, the brain of the whole computer. We chose a Ryzen 7. Now I would have gone with the 1800, but this is the 1700X. But come to find out, uh, lots of people are choosing this over the 1800 because it has the best bang for your buck as far as price to performance goes. Our motherboard is gonna be this ASRock X370 Tai Chi. The reason why I strayed away from my usual gigabyte preference is because the reviews on this particular unit are raving. It has all the features that I need and tons more that I don't. And then going into the next probably favorite part of everybody's is GPU. We were gonna do something a little bit more extravagant with a, I don't know, a 1070, 1080. It wasn't worth spending almost an extra 200 plus dollars uh, compared to the GeForce GTX 1060. I'm gonna be sticking with this for a little while. If we need more CUDA cores for editing, we'll get that down the road. And for our RAM, random access memory, we chose some Corsair LPX Vengeance. This is the 2133 megahertz. And I've heard that, you know, Ryzen's really speed dependent on RAM, but I've also heard contradicting opinions as far as bench tests goes. Let's go for storage. We'll start out here with the operating system where my windows will be installed. We're gonna be choosing our Samsung Pro. We got two of these because they were on sale and they were actually cheaper than the smaller sizes. Woo, almost had a top turvy accident there. And for long time storage, we're gonna stick with our WD Blacks, which is the one terabyte editions. We have two of those. And to make editing even faster in Sony Vegas, I have a 500 gigabyte SSD to transfer from my long time storage to this right here. So I'll read my files being edited onto this and write my files being edited onto this. I'm still a really old school conventional computer guy, so a disk drive was 100% necessary for me. We went with an Asus uh, simple optical drive because I still burn, read uh, CDs all the time. Going up next, let's do the CPU cooler. Now I have two of them right here. I made a mistake. I made a little bit of a jump on the gun first with the H105 plus the paired AM4 adapter because they don't originally fit the CPU. And then, you know, just remembering what I dealt with with my current CPU cooler, which has been great. I had to add a little bit of silicone to it. Uh, I just didn't want any possibility of leaks, pumps going out, anything electrical happening with a cooling device. So that's why I went with air cooling. Going up next, let's go into the big boy right here that you've probably been noticing. This is our UPS, surge protection. I wanted to protect all of my components. So that's why we went with a pure sine wave unit, as well as, you know, protecting in little bit of dips and voltage if you have a crazy power grid. So here's the, the, the latest uh, purchase, the most expensive, well, accessory. These are the Noctua Industrial PPC fans. Lots of CFM. Uh, even better DB rating to CFM rating ratio than the conventional brown and tan editions. Even though these get louder at maximum RPM, they're actually quieter at lower RPMs and put out more air. And we bought some splitters here as well from Noctua. These are the NA Sync 1 splitters, fan splitters. These are four pin fans. And our uh, uh, power supply is like 750 watts. The Seasonic 750 FX. So we got a pure sine wave backup converter. 
We've got our SATA cables, extra little things like here, like our mouse pad with a little wrist bubble, the Logitech uh, MK120. I, I just said our keyboard there. Oh, and also little card readers for our SD card because we use class 10. Every single thing I have said so far has been either on sale, had a rebate attached to it for 20 or $30 um, or something like that. So there was kind of an ulterior motive here with buying some of this stuff just because I was saving so much money. I kind of went a little bit overboard. I believe that's pretty much it. Holy crap, what a mouthful. I feel like I've been talking forever here. It is time to shut the hell up and get this thing built. have to get everything ready for our mounting with our CPU cooler. There's some stock mounts right here that need to be removed. So we have some additional hardware. Holy crap, look at the size of this thing. Definitely looks a lot bigger once you mount it on the motherboard. Damn near goes across the whole width. And we had to work backwards just a little bit, take off the fans, because I didn't know you couldn't have them on there while mounting it onto the motherboard. So now our uh, thermal paste is all spread out there on our chip, and it looks to be pretty solid. I screwed her down there really tightly. So now you can kind of see we have a little bit of obstruction for our RAM slots but it's not too, too bad. We should be able to just plug them right in, which is our next step. Just go ahead and plug it into slot one and three for dual channel mode, I believe, for our 32 gigabytes. So let's get that in there next. Whoops, I made a mistake, guys. I forgot this isn't single channel memory, so I have to use my dual channel, which is two and four. Made a quick mistake there, referred to my motherboard manual, and I just gotta go ahead and take these out and switch the slots. Then I can go ahead and put that fan back on. Always working backwards over here, god dang it. And here we are coming at you with the next step. We have the case out in the open, which is the Vengeance C70 from Corsair. We have the panels pretty much all taken off of it and you can see the insides. Lots and lots of places for ventilation. You can see all of them have dust filters uh, right here. Really great for not getting your machine all dirty. Our hard drive bays are gonna be sitting in here staying because of our SSD and physical uh, spinning disc uh, combination. We're gonna have our little uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. We'll have probably one of these empty or two of these empty. But what's nice is we can add our fans right there so we'll have two fans in the front two fans right there uh, another one right here another one right there two fans on the top so there'll be lots of ventilation uh, let alone what's coming from our CPU cooler going across that way so it's pretty much gonna be a positive airflow system where it's coming in in a slightly more places than it is going out so we don't have a vacuum effect with you know pretty much all the crevices sucking in dust it'll be the exact opposite it'll be pushing out dust so that's what we're gonna be trying to shoot for. We'll lay everything down flat on the table and just get it. Oops, got, we got some screws up there. And just get everything all screwed in. Already the motherboard is nicely in there with our screws. We have about nine of them in there. I think that's all I see. Pretty much, yeah, that's all the holes. 
So now we can kind of undo what came with the case. We got a USB header up here, an on off switch, and all those come with little probes. And uh, respectively, they have little sockets that, or little uh, prongs that you can plug those into uh, right down here. So that's what I'm going to do. Just untie this stuff right here. Here's the USB, but it's not quite long enough. So we're going to take this out and fish it through one of these holes right here, or this hole, to plug it in up there. I'm going to go ahead and chuck in the PSU. Uh, now that we have everything kind of tipped up like this and it's gonna it's gonna be kind of in its own little environment here It's gonna be sucking air in right here uh, through this fan and pushing air out uh, Right through the back. So we'll put it down like this So all of our connections are faced the inside and uh, we can just go ahead and bolt her on in that way Well fast forward just a little bit and we've got some of the wire organizing down just a little bit but not too too much because we don't even know if this thing's gonna boot up successfully we may have to send something back we have a whole week to figure out uh, you know once everything's all said and done but uh, you know I, I'm going around I got the power supply all hooked up right there you can see some of the uh, you know beginnings of organization for wiring and we got the USB 3.0 we got the hard drive bays taken out and we're about to load them up with the SSDs and pretty much everything is where it's supposed to be I got the optical drive in there the fan controller all I did was just put it put some screws in you see that those screws those are five and a quarter inch bays just chuck those right in and everything's going you know pretty smoothly so far we got to get power to our optical drives and get data to them so that's what the SATA cables are for and we have 10 spots right there are the SATA uh, connectors, connections, well, blah, blah, blah. And so let's go ahead and start getting the SSDs inside of the little trays. There's these things right here. All we got to do is get some hardware and you can see where it mounts, where those little holes are. And we'll get those bays in there, get everything plugged in. We've gone and done it again, doing work behind the scenes. Just had to do it, you know, it's one of those things where you're building the computer, you just want to get in your own rhythm of things. And that's what we did. We have got the SSDs in here. And if you've ever seen anyone plug in a socket, you know how to plug in a hard drive. Two little wires and bam, bam, thank you, ma'am. We have got our cages pretty much all filled up. And I wanted to keep it like this because, you know, it's, it's, it's good ventilation, it looks good, and there's nothing jerry-rigged as far as putting the hard drives any place that they're not really supposed to be. So our SATA cables are all nicely uh, connected right there, and our organization is looking all right on the back side. I'll show you real quick. We've just began doing some zip ties, but really there's not too much going on back here as it is. So, uh, you know, what you're looking at is pretty much bare bones. Did a little bit of bending so their slack isn't on parts of the air uh, that you can see down there coming through the little holes and that's where we're at right now so what we've got to do is install the fans right up here now we've been waiting and waiting and they just arrived in the mail today these are the two top 140s for exhaust and then we're going to do a 140 um, on the front panel for an intake so let's go ahead and get those in there right now we are almost done Oh yeah, coming right along guys. Almost time for the final step here. Now that we have pretty much all the wiring done on the inside, we can put the big bulky GPU graphics card right here. Now it is going to be a pretty tight fit, but there is plenty of space uh, between the CPU cooler and the first slot. We'll get it in there and show you just how close it is. But I saw Linus Tech Tips actually told me to just put a little bit of isolating material between the two surfaces. That way if anything does happen, you know, you have a little bit of protection there. There we go, the graphics card is installed and a little bit more space than I was first anticipating. There's got to be at least a quarter inch or maybe just a little bit more than a quarter inch and the only thing closest 
is that little uh, pin right there, excuse me, the uh, the little mounting brackets for the fans. And the, the, I'm, pretty, I'm pretty satisfied with that. I'll go ahead and stick something in there though, just to give me a little bit of a safeguard. But overall, the fitment on this entire case has been pretty, pretty good. But if you just noticed something when I zoomed in here, there's a little bit of a nick on my heat sink. Let's see if I can focus on that. Right here, see that little nick right there? Well, I cut it off with a piece of, with some pliers because my fan was hitting it just a little bit and I actually sanded down an area on my fan right there. I just removed a little bit of the plastic and now everything is fitting A-OK. -okay. So we can put the panels on and all the fans are connected. The GPU is connected. All we gotta do is give it some power right here with this little uh, cord and then we'll be good to go, guys. I'm gonna do that right now, cinch up the last couple things and put the panels on and I'll come right back at you guys once we get to that power button mode. Oh boy. <laughs> I think that's gonna do it, YouTubulous. Just about ready to fire her on. We have got our video cables plugged in, our power cables plugged in, and of course, our little power block just in case we lose power once we're installing the uh, OS. That would be really, really bad to have that everything be bricked right in the middle of doing it. So we got our ASUS monitor, our keyboard, our mouse, everything's all set up, and our operating system is plugged in, and we're about to fire it up for the first time. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and put the camera down and let some music play and just go through the processes because I need to do this nice and slow going and uh, it's, it's pretty much self-explanatory if you've ever pushed OK install. I'm just gonna do it one step at a time and here we go. How many people on YouTube are using Windows 10? Give me a show of hands here in the comment section. How many people there are using this? <coughs> Excuse me, that was disgusting. Look at this, we've got a desktop. We're on the desktop right now. There's my start menu, there's everything. We have got ourselves a fully functional computer right out of the box. Don't have to mess with anything with RMA. Now I just gotta get my editing programs, my sound programs, my bass box for my subwoofer building, all those programs installed, and we should be ready to go. Man, this has been one heck of a nice process, and pretty much the longest part was just figuring out what to buy. So now we gotta put everything over in the main desk area, and that'll be a whole nother video once we get the damn thing built. All right, guys, until the next video, this is EXO signing out. No, I'm just kidding. I couldn't leave you guys hanging like that. We still gotta see how fast this thing boots up from a dead still, so we're gonna turn the power button on, uh, give you guys a little timed start up here for Windows 10, and then just show you my desktop. I got my video editing software all installed, all the drivers are installed. I am, I am happy as heck, so I'm gonna walk over and uh, I'm gonna turn the fans on 5 volts so it won't be too, too loud for on camera. So let's go ahead and do this. Alright, she's powered on. Everything ramps up to full bore at first. And I hate how you can hear that optical drive start spinning up. I don't know why it does that because there's no there's no disc in it. Maybe you guys can answer that question for me. So here we are. Oh look at that, it's already there. It's already booted in. I didn't even count. We'll have to go back in the editing and see how, how quick that was. But here we are, we got my music files all right there. We got my projects for Sony Vegas. And then, of course, Sony Vegas itself. And everything is so fast. It's so fast, you guys. I did a test render last night of a, a 1080p 60 frame video, and holy crap, uh, what was it? Like four times faster from 50 seconds, 49 seconds, down to 10 seconds. So this thing is a beast, and I am so happy that everything went really smoothly. All the installation, all the drivers, everything was provided very easily uh, right at the tip of my fingers. So, there's the build, guys. EXO's Editing Rig 2000 and, well, let's just call it 2018 because we didn't even use it at all in 2017. So, there she is, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I'm not trying to be too informational in this video, just showing the vlogish type of process because lots of people wanted to. All right, I'll talk to you in the next video. This is EXO, working on my new computer.